is Edry Irvine, and I'm here to represent the 26 million Americans who are unemployed through no fault of their own. I want to bring with first a couple of stories um, of people who couldn't be here today, and I think the stories tell a lot. The first one is from an aircraft mechanic. He was laid off not because his company was in the red, but because they were making enough profit. He has a five-year-old daughter that he's raising by himself, and he received his last unemployment check on September 15, 2010. That was also the day that his daughter turned five. It was the same day, he said, that I received my last unemployment check. I know I have to save that check, but I told myself this might be the last time she'll be able to celebrate with at least a cake. From another union worker, he's been 35 years in the construction trades, and he says, I'm 53 years old, and I've been kicked to the curb with no job, no insurance, now no home, and no unemployment left. And yet I still believe in this country's democracy. I hope and pray that someday this all ends, and we can wake up from this nightmare. Hopefully Congress can get off their butts and do something for the great people of the United States. This man has a son who served three uh, tours in Iraq, and he still believes in this country, and I do too. I want to share my story now. It's not nearly as dramatic, it's not very tragic. In fact, I've been pretty fortunate, and for most of the last year, I've been telling myself, I'm fine, I'm all right, I've kept a good sense of humor. I've worked for over 40 years. I've never had trouble finding a job. I did everything that the society and my parents told me to do. I worked hard, I went to school, I raised a wonderful son, and I've got two great grandkids. I did everything right. And then the financial meltdown happened. And it was caused by Wall Street greed, deregulation, didn't have anything to do with me, but I lost my job. Now I got a pretty good severance package from the law firm that I was laid off from, and I still have my health insurance because of COBRA and the American Reinvestment and Recovery Act. But if I don't find a job soon, I'm going to lose those benefits because I won't be able to pay for them. I've been responsible over the last year. I've cut my expenses to make the money that I have go as far as I can. I've been careful with how I spend my money and what I do. I have sent out resume after resume after resume. I've networked just like they tell me to, and I tell you, that's not something that I'm very comfortable with. It's almost as hard as standing up here in front of you. In front of my friends and my family, I've kept up a wonderfully positive attitude. But all of this has come at an emotional cost, and that's the real cost to America. I lost a lot of my self-confidence. I was embarrassed to have to keep telling people that, no, I still haven't found a job. I felt like it was somehow my fault that I hadn't found a job. If only I were a little bit better. For the last month, as Rick said, I've been volunteering at the One Nation Working Together field office helping with the buses, working with the constituency tables, working yeah. with our brothers and sisters in labor, pulling America together and putting America back to work. That's the vision of One Nation working together, and that should be the vision of all of us. In working with, this, with these wonderful people that I've met at the field office, and i got to tell you, they are incredible. Um, I have been able to regain a bit more of myself back. I've begun to remember that I do have value and that I can make a positive contribution. I want the same for every other unemployed American. I want it now. So one of the things that I hope every single person here today will do, when you leave this city or go home, if you're unemployed, volunteer, find a cause, find a campaign, 
go to the union and say, I can help, I can volunteer. It's going to bring back that value. It's going to allow you to be a positive force for change in your community. We, the unemployed, are jobless through no fault of our own. I want to say that again. It's not our fault. We don't have to apologize. We don't have to remain invisible in the corner anymore. We count, and our voices can and will be heard. Help me. And all the others like me send a message to all those politicians who use us as a token in their political battles, who scapegoat us, who say we have to pee in a cup. Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Hatch, I'll pee right after you do. us, they do it at their own peril. We vote. We'll get out the vote. And we'll bite back. Yeah. So join me. Join me in the halls of Congress, in the corridors of power in corporate America, and most importantly, join me in the voting booth on 11-2-10. We are the unemployed, but we are powerful working together.